strategy behind this thing, yeah? And it's there to take people's money, and to, it's a business, right? And we're talking about mostly in poor area. No, then let me just bring some good observation here, right? And we're talking about poor areas. Every time you see a post office, always look and see where the bench shops are and the off-license. So you, so you can tell how poor an area is by uh, the post office, the off-license and the bookie shop? You know what I said to you? In poor areas, always look where the post office and then see where the, where the, where the, where the bench shop is. Right? And the liquor store. And you probably find that, not find, that is deliberate. In, I'm talking about in poor areas. If you look in areas like Hampstead, Highgate, why is it then someone's paying shops in there? It's always in poor areas. And it's deliberate. It's deliberate. Maybe that's where, ma- to, maybe, right? that's where to... maybe that's where people want to do it. Yeah, that's right, because it's, 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 it's business. Yeah, no, I don't mean the people who put it, set the shop up. I mean the people who use the facility. Yeah, but no, people, nobody's yeah, going to put a shop there the if people, people don't the go in there. Because they're looking at the way out, isn't it? These are the, the people who, you know, who are so kind of looking at the way out, have no money. You know, remember I said to you, they, when the post office are, they get their gyro check or whatever the case may be. They say, well, I want to make some money here and put my bet and everything. And it's a social thing as well. So, they, you know, you got to look at the psychology behind this, this thing here. So you, right. you are, you are, you, have you ever put a bit on yourself? You could have put a bit on yourself in the early days when I, when I had no sense. You know, I couldn't be put sense to put a bit. You know what I mean? Be, be you. But there's some people what, that what do I, it and enjoy it. Well, I'm not against this man. I mean, I fight against anybody that try to put a bet on and enjoy it. Because some people put a, a bet on to try to win a lottery. Day. But when you're spending all your wages, right, it's a problem. Right? When you're spending your money and you're not looking after your family, Right, it's a problem, right? See, so I mean, we need to understand exactly what's happening. And like I said before, right, people think it's to the machines, what's in the bench. I'm sorry, the best thing is the machine. That is why they put, they flood the community for all these um, bench shops with the machines in there, and that's how they make their money. Well, I, 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 tell <laughs> no, you what, I, 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 I know because I met you down there and I spoke to you on my inside out piece how passionate you are. Uh, Dougie, thank you for starting us off and laying it down so passionately. Uh, always fun speaking to you. Look after yourself. Uh, that's Douglas Williams there, long-time Tottenham resident, campaigned tirelessly, uh, honestly, to stop them closing out. Body music at the time, wasn't it? Uh, and opening a Paddy Power. And all sorts of, uh, where I live, like Thatch House, you know, places that we, in my uh, part of town, we can uh, associate, I don't know, with pubs, bakeries, with Thatch House. Arms, all of those kinds of areas now, uh, they're bookie shops. They're bookie shops. Now, they're, they're, they're only allowed four in every one, and it constitutes about 20 to 25 percent of the profit of a lot of these. So, I'm just talking about gambling. Is gambling a problem so far as you're concerned? Is it something you do for a bit of fun, or are you like Dougie seeing it in poorer areas, thinking, my goodness, they're destroying communities because people lose their minds in there? 020 722 How are you, Michael? I'm all right, Eddie. Yourself? Good. T- talk to me about this one. I mean, I'm trying not to let you know all that I know on this one, but sadly, and I do say <laughs> sadly, I know a little too much. What, what are your thoughts? Yeah, my, my father was a gambler, Ed, and um, uh, he he was a greengrocer, so he had a cash business. Ah, uh, so he had and the money, he had the cash flow. Yeah, in his pocket, mate, and uh, every day he'd walk across the bookies, the stallions, and uh, I think that's where my inheritance went. Uh, How, did, did, was he still able to put food on the table and pay the rent? Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, but, uh, then he was functioning, we, wasn't he? He was, yeah, we always had... We always had, you know, plenty of food in the house and clothes on our back. I don't. I never went without anything. I never had a new bike, but I always had a bike, you know. But my point really is that it is addictive behaviour. Predominantly, I think it's kind of um, working class people. Yeah, that, that, that's what Dougie was saying in the, in the poorer areas. Yeah. But is it worse now than it was there? I remember. Do you remember they used to have the? You couldn't look into a bookie shop in the old days, could you? They no, use, they I, you use, know, but you can see all the way through now. When I was a kid, women women weren't allowed in the bookies. I know that sounds ridiculous. Young children and women weren't allowed in bookies. And the other thing that that happened to me Ed, is my my kind of middle son had this real addiction to fruit machines that you're talking about. And That's we right. went to all of the local bookies and put Don't him in a place Don't where he wasn't allowed in. Did but, it help? 
Yeah, I oh, did. It worked. Luckily, we gripped him. And, and you got it. You got it in time, did you? Because once that that gorgeous goddess of seduction wraps her arms around him, he's gone. He would travel on a bus to the ends of the earth to slip some money in that slot machine. Eddie, I'll, I'll give you. A, I'll give you a really quick solution. Cause I'm all about solutions. You know me, mate. Um, bookies shouldn't be open till eleven o'clock at night. The, the local authorities should only should only license them like they do every other shop. Nine to five, eight to four, that's it, bookies closed. If you that's, that's, that's I, I, I do, I do the school run and the bookie shop is opening and I'm getting home after 10 o'clock at night and the bookie shop is just closing. Yeah, bookies are open until 11 o'clock at night and that's the first week thing we should do. We should change the licensing laws so they're only open nine to five. Thanks very much for your ideas, Michael. Tony, you, you're not in agreement with Dougie. Uh, no, I'm not. Uh, not as regarding uh, where bookie shops are placed, because, you know, I drive around most of London, and I know poor areas do suffer from a, a glut of betting offices, but the place where I see more betting establishments than anywhere else is Mayfair, which is London's probably richest area. Yeah, but um, what are so they? What are they? Casinos? Um, no. Bookies. No, not bookies. bookies. What? Yeah. yeah there's what? bookies everywhere in Mayfair. Everywhere, Eddie. I wonder, within said borough, and let's compare it to Newham, if it had more. What do you reckon? If, 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 I, if I asked one of Dan, one of our lovely team here, to work that out, you, you think you'd win that bet, do you? I think in a sort of area, the size, Mayfair is a very small area within Westminster, and I would say most of Westminster's um, betting offices and... and well, 18 and on the Barking Road, mate. You, you can't beat that. I know you can't. They've got 18 bookie shops on the Barking Road. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's a, bit, it's a bit of a cheat, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, you've got to be a cabbie to know.